Well, the debt ceiling debate continues in Washington as the deadline to avoid default looms, but the back and forth might be a good thing for someone far away from here, China. Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman joins us now with the details. Uh, what does this have to do? Talk to us about the, the feed through here, Rick. This is some analysis from the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Everybody's trying to figure out the second and third order consequences if there were to be some sort of default, even a short term technical one. And one of them is that uh, it could enhance the standing of China's currency. There are uh, a lot of countries in the world, believe it or not, uh, that don't love the fact that uh, the, United, the U.S. dollar is the, is the world's reserve currency and they, they would like to be able to do more business, more trade. Uh, in local currencies. Uh, so there, uh, you know, and this includes China. I mean, China really would love if more uh, transactions, especially in their part of the world, in Asia, were conducted in uh, the RMB, the Chinese currency. So if we would have something like a default, it would, it's not like uh, investors all over the world would just simply dump the dollar and dollar denominated securities, but it could uh, be, create an erosion effect. Um, and uh, I mean, let's remember, the U.S. has never really defaulted before. Nobody knows exactly what will happen. But as uh, economists and analysts try to think through, what could what could some of these consequences be? One of them is declining confidence uh, in the U.S. dollar and uh, the declining use of the dollar as the world's reserve currency. Uh, sort of more immediately, Rick, I do wonder what the president's decision to not go visit Australia and Papua New Guinea um, because that at least was aimed in part at solidifying sort of China, a China alternative, right? Or right. A, an axis against China, if you will, um, in the Pacific. Um, it, do you think that's going to also have some lasting effects or is that one sort of repairable? Well, I mean, the reason he did that is because he, th he feels like he has to come back home. Right. Uh, to deal with the debt ceiling problem. Um, so it all, you know, the debt ceiling uh, controls everything. The tail's wagging the dog here. Um, I think um, Biden can, can uh, make that trip at a different point. Um, and he kind of split the difference on this. I mean, he could have canceled the whole trip um, and he didn't do that. He, uh, he's in J uh, Japan right now. Um, so that's, you know, that's an important part of the trip. Uh, he's also talking uh, about, um, you know, trying to keep a support going for Ukraine in the, its war with Russia. Um, so, um, you know, pre I think Biden, he's, the second, he's in the second half of his first term. That's a time when a president loves to focus a little bit less on domestic politics, especially now that uh, now that Republicans control the House, go around, fly around the world, be a statesman. Uh, uh, Biden is trying to do some of that and he would like to do more, but he is being yanked back because of this stupid showdown over the debt ceiling. Yeah, well, we'll see how it plays out. Rick, thank you. Appreciate it. Bye, guys.